Hi everyone, this is May. I'm back again to continue my read through of the Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation, Mo Dao Zu Shi. So we're in the middle of chapter four, and we're still with the teenage Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji as they get to know each other and start their adventures. So let's go. In order to prevent the old stick in the mud and the little stick in the mud from attacking him in the middle of the night and hauling him out of bed for punishment, Wei Yuxian slept hugging his sword the entire night. Who would have thought that all would be peaceful until the next day? It was then that Nie Huai Sang came to find him elated. Wei Xiong, you really have the best of luck. The old man went to attend the symposium hosted by my family at Qinghe. We don't have class for the next few days. The old one was gone, leaving the little one. And he was a piece of cake to handle. Wei Yuxian scrambled out of bed, tugging on his boots. He said happily, Well, doesn't fortune smile down on me today? Auspicious clouds above tell me that heaven's got my back. On the side, Jiang Cheng was wiping his sword with the utmost care while he reigned on his parade. You still won't escape punishment when he comes back. Why worry what happens to us after we die? Let's just live freely while we're all still alive. I refuse to believe I can't find a couple of little pheasants on this Lan Mountain. The three strolled out, arms around each other's shoulders. As they passed by the cloud recesses reception hall, the elegance room, Wei Yuxian suddenly chuckled and stopped in his tracks. He said, amazed, two little sticks in, Lan Jans. A number of people emerged from the elegance room, but the ones leading the group were two young men. Their faces were of sculpted ice and refined jade and they were clad in attire as white as snow. Even the tassels swaying from the hilts of the swords on their backs danced airily in the wind. It was only their demeanour and expressions that told of the difference between them. Wei Wuxian could immediately tell the one with the stiff face was Lan Wang Ji. This meant the gentle-looking one must be the other twin jade of the Lan clan, Sobrike Zhou Jun, courtesy name Lan Xichen. When Lan Wangqi spotted Wei Wuxian, his brows furrowed. He was practically shooting him a death glare, as if he'd be corrupted if he looked at him for a second longer. He moved his eyes to gaze into the far distance. Lan Xichen, on the other hand, smiled. And you two are? Jiang Cheng gestured in courtesy. Jiang Wanyin of Yunmeng. Wei Wuxian gestured in courtesy as well. Wei Wuxian of Yunmeng. Lan Xichen returned the greeting. Nie Huai Sang squeaked, his voice soft as a mosquito's. Si Chen Ge Ge. Lan Xichen said, Huai Sang, I have recently returned from Qinghe. Your older brother was asking after your studies. How go things? Will you be able to pass this year? For the most part, yes. Nie Huai Sang was like a wilted squash after frost, looking pleadingly at Wei Wuxian. Wei Yuxian grinned widely. Zhao Jun, where are you off to? To exterminate evil water ghosts, Lan Xichen replied. We are short on capable hands, so I returned to find Wang Ji. Lan Wang Ji said coldly, Xiong Zhang, no need to speak over much on the matter. Time is of the essence. Let us depart. Wei Yuxian quickly stopped him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know how to catch water ghosts. Zhao Jun, why don't you bring us along? Lan Xichen smiled but did not speak, and Lan Wangji said, It is against the rules. How is that against the rules? Wei Yuxian demanded. We are always catching water ghosts back at Yunmeng. Besides, it's not like there's school these next few days. Yunmeng was replete with lakes and other bodies of water teeming with water ghosts, so the Jiang clansmen truly were experts in this area. Jiang Cheng also wanted to regain the considerable amount of face the Jiang clan of Yunmeng had lost during their stay at the Lan sect, so he chimed in. That's right, Zhou Jun, we can definitely help. Unnecessary. The Lan clan of Kusu can also... Lan Wangji hadn't finished when Lan Xichen said with a smile, That may not be a bad idea. Thank you in advance. Go make your preparations and we will depart together. Will Huai Sang join us? 
Although Nia Huai Sang wanted to go with the party, the sight of Lan Xichen reminded him of his older brother and guilt seized him, so he didn't dare lark about. I'll pass. I'll go back and review my studies. This studious posturing was done in the hopes that next time, Lan Xichen would say more good things about him in front of his older brother. As for Hui Wuxian and Jiang Cheng, they returned to their rooms to make preparations. Lan Wangji watched their retreating backs with a puzzled frown. Xiong Zhang, why bring them? Joking and larking about is unsuitable during spirit extermination. Lan Xichen replied, Sect leader Jiang's chief disciple and his only son both have a fair reputation in Yunmeng. They may not only know how to joke and lark about. Lan Wangji did not comment, but his face was written with a certain sentiment that could have said, I beg to differ. Lan Xichen added, Besides, were you not amenable to the offer of his company? Lan Wangji was dumbfounded. Lan Xichen explained, I only agreed because I saw you looked like you might want Sek Leader Jiang's eldest disciple to come with us. Lan Xichen, the original matchmaker, before the elegance room, the silence was like frozen ice. It was a good moment before Lan Wangji said arduously, nothing of the sort. He wished to defend himself further, but Wei Wuxian and Jiang Cheng had already returned speedily, their swords on their backs. Thus, Lan Wangji had no choice but to remain silent, and the group mounted their swords and took off. The place, haunted by the water ghosts, was called Tai Yi Town, and it was more than 10 kilometers away from the cloud recesses. Tai Yi Town was woven through with scores of waterways. It could have been said that the little city was covered with a dense net formed of tangled rivers, or perhaps it was that the densely packed local houses along the shores were what covered the cobweb-like waterways. The truth of it was unclear. Lined by the little houses with white walls and grey tiled roofs, the riverways were crowded with boats filled with men and women and baskets upon baskets. Blooming bouquets, fresh vegetables and fruits, bamboo crafts and cakes, tofu and tea and fine silk, all sorts of teeming trade bustled along the riverway. Gusu was situated in Jiangnan and the lilting local dialect was soft and sweet to the ear. Two of the boats crashed head-on, toppling several jugs of sticky rice liquor, but even the resulting argument between the two boatmen sounded like the chirping of birds. There were many lakes in Yunmeng, but such small water towns were few and far between. Wei Wuxian watched curiously, then took out some money to buy two jugs of the sticky rice liquor, passing one to Jiang Cheng. The way the Gusu people speak is so kittenish. How is that arguing? They should see how people of Yunmeng fight. It'll terrify them. Lan Zhan, what are you looking at me for? I didn't get you one, but it's not because I'm stingy. People of your clan aren't allowed to drink, right? Without further ado, the group boarded dozens of little sampans, poling toward where the water ghosts were gathering. The locals crowding either shore gradually lessened in number and the riverways also became still and quiet. Wei Wuxian and Jiang Cheng each took over a sampan and were racing to see who could go faster while listening to the arrangements concerning the local evil water ghosts. This riverway led to a vast lake called Biling Lake. For decades, there had never been any hauntings by water ghosts at Tai Yi Town. In recent months, however, there had been many who fell into the water in this riverway as well as in Biling Lake, and cargo ships would randomly sink. Many days ago, Lan Xichen had set up an array to cast a net. He thought he would capture a few ghosts on this first attempt. Who could have imagined that he would catch over a dozen instead? Once the faces of those corpses were washed and the bodies brought to the nearby towns for inspection, a surprising number of them remained unclaimed. None of the locals knew them. When the array was set again just yesterday, plenty more had been captured. Wei Wuxian commented, 
it doesn't really appear to be the case that they were drowned elsewhere and were washed down here by the currents. Water ghosts are a territorial sort. They usually only recognize one body of water, the one where they drowned. Very seldom do they leave it. Lan Xichen nodded. Correct. Which is why I feel this is no trivial matter and had Wang Ji come, in case something unpredictable happens. Wei Yuxian said, Zhou Jun, water ghosts are all super intelligent. If we take our time poling around like this, won't the search take forever? What if they all hide at the bottom of the lake and we can't find them? Lan Wang Ji said, We stop only when they are found. It is our duty. So we use our nets? Wei Yuxian asked. Correct, Lan Xichen said. Could the Jiang Clan or Yun Meng have other methods? Wei Yuxian smiled but didn't answer. The Jiang Clan or Yun Meng also employed nets, of course, but he had always simply jumped into the river and hauled the water ghost ashore because he was good at swimming. But that was definitely too dangerous a method for him to use in front of the lands lest it reach Nan Ren's ears and get him chewed out again. He changed the subject. It'd be good if there was something like fish bait that could lure the water ghosts to us on their own, or something that could pinpoint their positions like a compass. Keep your head down and watch the water. Focus on your target. You and your wild imagination again, Yang Cheng said. Cultivation and flying swords used to be nothing but someone's wild imagination too, Wei Yuxian argued. He looked down. Coincidentally, he could see the bottom of the sampan that Lan Mozi was riding. An idea hit him and he called out, Lan Zhan, look at me! Lan Mozi was on guard and concentrating, so he looked to him in reflex when he heard the call. But all he saw was Wei Yuxian slash the water with his bamboo pole, sending a wave of water splashing over. Lan Wang Ji tipped his toes and leapt lightly onto another sampan, dodging the splash. Upset that Wei Wuxian really had come just to horse around, he gritted his teeth. Frivolous! However, Wei Wuxian gave a kick to the side of the sampan he had been standing on. With a flick of his pole, the boat flipped upside down, revealing the bottom. And to the planks of that bottom, there clung three bloated-faced and ghastly pale water ghosts. The closest sect disciples immediately suppressed them. Lan Xichen smiled. Wei Guzi, how did you know they were on the bottom of the sampan? Wei Wuxian knocked on the side of the sampan. Easy! The boat draft was wrong. He was the only one on the sampan just then, yet the load draft was heavier than the weight of two people, so there had to be something clinging to the bottom. Experienced as expected, Lan Xichen commended. Wei Yuxian gently stirred the water with his pole. The little sampan sped up and he slid in next to Lan Wang Ji. Hmm, sliding in next to Lan Wang Ji is becoming a habit. Uh, with the two sampans side by side, he said, Lan Zhan, I wasn't trying to splash you on purpose earlier. Water ghosts are shrewd, so if I said something first, they would have run away if they heard me. Hey, don't ignore me. Come on, look at me, Lan Er Gongzi. Lan Wang Ji condescended to cast him a glance. Why have you come? Wei Yuxian replied sincerely, To offer an apology. It was my fault last night. I was wrong. Lan Wang Ji's face was faintly dark, probably because he hadn't forgotten exactly how Wei Yuxian had last offered him an apology. Despite knowing the answer, Wei Yuxian asked, Why do you look so upset? Don't worry, I'm really here to help today. Jiang Cheng couldn't watch this anymore and piped up. If you're helping, then stop talking and get over here. One of the sect disciples shouted, The net has moved. Sure enough, the ropes of the net abruptly started jerking. Wei Yuxian instantly perked up. It's here, it's here. Long hair, thick as fine black silk, swirled near the dozens of little boats, and pair after pair of ghastly white hands clawed at the sides of the sampans. Lan Wang Ji twisted his hand back to draw his sword. Beaten was unsheathed and the motion cleanly sliced off a dozen wrists 
on the left side of the boat, leaving only the hands, their fingers still deeply dug into the wood. Just as he was going for the right side, a red glare flashed past him, and Wei Wuxian was already sheathing his sword. The strange movement in the water ceased, and the net calmed once more. Wei Wuxian's move had been extremely fast, but Lan Mengji had still seen that it was a top-grade spiritual sword he was carrying. He asked respectfully, What is the name of your sword? Whatever, Wei Wuxian replied. Lan Mengji stared at him. Wei Wuxian thought he hadn't heard properly and repeated himself, Whatever. Lan Mengji frowned and rejected the answer. That sword has a spirit. It is disrespectful to call it whatever. Wei Wuxian sighed. Think outside the box, won't you? I'm not telling you to call it whatever. I'm saying the name of my sword is the word whatever. Sui Bian. Here, you see? He passed over his sword to show Lan Wangji the characters engraved on it. Within the engravings upon the hilt were the carvings of two ancient characters and what they spelled was the word Sui Bian. Lan Mengji was at a loss for words. Wei Yuxian considerately explained, You don't have to say anything. I know. You must be wondering why I gave it that name. Everyone asks if there's a special meaning to it. To be honest though, there isn't. It's just that when Jiang Shu Shu was bestowing the sword upon me, he asked me what I wanted to call it. I thought of over 20 names at the time and wasn't happy with any of them. So I thought, why don't I let Jiang Shu Shu give it a name instead? So I responded with, whatever. Who would have figured that when the sword was forged and came out of the kiln, that would be the word on it? Jiang Shu Shu said, since that's the case, let the sword be called Sui Bian. It's not actually such a bad name, don't you think? At last, Lan Wangzi squeezed a word out through the cracks of his teeth. Absurd. Wei Yuxian slung the sword over his shoulder. You're too boring. The name is so much fun. It fools uptight people like you every single time. <laughs> Just then, within the jade green lake, a long black shadow circled around the sampans and flashed past. Jiang Cheng had just finished cutting down the water ghosts on his side and was still scanning around to see if there were any left when he saw that black shadow. He immediately shouted, It's come again! So that takes us to the end of part 4.6 which would have been the equivalent of chapter 16 in the original Chinese web serialization. So if you enjoyed this video, please click like and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, take care and stay safe everyone. Bye!